you know your faith is real versus fake? How do you tell the difference between a cultural Christian and a real Christian? We're going to finish our five-part series on that today. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And by the way, if you appreciate this content at some point, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would really love to have you as part of our family. So I don't normally give you guys homework because my concern is that we're supposed to be walking through this and you're going to click off of this video and then you'll forget. So here's what I'm going to do. There is a passage of scripture, Galatians 2, 15 to 29. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to my card up there that should show up. And I did a sermon on this section. And I want to point you to that sermon to walk you through going through the scripture together because it's a big section of scripture. And I want to just be able to wrap up the series today and I don't want it to be a 45 minute video going through those scriptures together so please go check out the uh, sermon that I did on that it is a full sermon so you know you'll need a half an hour 45 minutes whatever the sermon was but please go do that and and we're gonna be talking about that indirectly today but what I want to do to start is I want to share a story with you how to tell the difference in someone who is genuinely accepted their salvation versus someone who is trying to earn their salvation. In other words, the cultural Christian. All right. Now, every analogy breaks down at some point, so don't take any of this too far. But I hope to drive home the point today. So I want you to picture with me a child that is up for adoption and specifically an older child. Right. We all know that younger children, or at least I would assume most people know, that younger children get adopted a lot quicker than older children. Okay, so we're going to picture a child that's a little bit older that's looking to be adopted. Let's say the child is 11 or 12, something like that. Um, so this child, typically 11 and 12 year olds, are, it's a little harder to get them adopted. So let's, let's picture that. And this child is adopted by a family. And let's say that they're a loving, good family. So this, this child, and, and by the way, um, in, in orphanages, I don't know if you're supposed to call them that anymore or not, probably not, but in, in homes, whatever the proper politically correct term is now, um, children that are in there are often coached on how to get adopted. You know, okay, Johnny, you need to, I feel bad for anybody named Johnny, but anyway, okay, Johnny, you know, if you want a family, if you want your forever family, you have to be quiet, obedient, whatever the stuff is that they're coaching them on. And it's really like a salesmanship class, right? You have to do all of this stuff in order to earn your way into this family. And then if you want to stay there because, you know, uh, you know, Johnny, you saw Billy over there, he got brought back because he didn't do the stuff that he was supposed to do. So a little Johnny, when you get to that forever home, you still need to do X, Y, and Z. And they actually coach children. And again, I don't say that in a judgmental way. It's a sad reality. So please don't misunderstand me. I'm not judging. It's just a sad reality that shouldn't have to be. But little Johnny learns how to be a good boy so that he can stay with his, so he can get adopted to begin with, and then stay with his forever family. So Little Johnny gets adopted into this good family. They, they genuinely love and adopt him, all the legal stuff done. That's the point that we're in. And, you know, the parents notice that Johnny is such a hard worker. He's obedient. He doesn't argue and all the stuff that usually goes along with raising kids. And, like, to a degree, they're even looking at their natural children, their blood children, going, what's wrong with you guys? You know, this kid's been in our house a year, let's say, and he folds his laundry, does his dishes, makes his bed, picks up his toys, does his homework, all that without being asked, right? My karate, the zero rule, it means it's automatic, right? It's stuff that you do without having to be asked. Um, Johnny does all those things, and they're looking at their own kids like, hey, what's, what's wrong with you guys? Johnny's been here a year, and he's doing better than you, right? And so time goes on, and Johnny is just still such a hard worker, but it starts to dawn on them that 
Johnny doesn't necessarily enjoy doing those things. It, it seems like he does them begrudgingly, not, not with a bad attitude per se, but it just starts dawning on them that the difference isn't appreciation, it's obligation. See, uh, you may or may not know, depending on how many of videos you've watched, but my father was abusive and he didn't feed me. It was one of the many th abuses that he did. Can't tell by looking at me now. Um, but when I first moved back with my mom, every time we went grocery shopping, I would thank my mom for groceries and I didn't even know I was doing it. I was just so happy to have food in the house that I was allowed to eat, right? So I didn't even know I was doing it. But my mom turns to me one day, I don't remember how old I was, but my mom turns to me one day and she's like, Aaron, not that I don't appreciate your gratitude, but why do you always thank me for groceries? And I was like, I don't know. I'm appreciative. Like, and we got into it and we realized that it's because my dad didn't feed me and I was so thankful just to have food that it, it was like when you go out to eat and I don't know, maybe kids, you should, but maybe kids don't even thank their parents for going out to eat anymore because it's so common. But um, actually I know they don't because my, my own kids don't when we go out to eat all the time, um, right? But because when you don't have something, you appreciate it when you do have it. So they're recognizing, back to Johnny, they, they're starting to recognize that Johnny's not just doing this stuff out of appreciation. He's doing it out of obligation. Now, some parents are like, hey, forget it. I don't care why the kid's doing stuff. He's taking care of himself. Let it go. But like I said, these are good parents. He got adopted into a good family. So they start doing like what my mom did. They started asking him questions. You know, well, Johnny, why do you make your bed every day? Well, because I'm supposed to. Well, Johnny, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And as they dig into it, they discover something they didn't know because a lot of people don't know that children are coached, children that come up through the system. A lot of people don't realize that they're coached how to get and how to keep a family because the, the kind of the number one fear of children that still want to be adopted. Now, there are some that are just so fed up, like, see ya, I'm out. Um, they don't care. But the children that still have the tender heart and, and, and want that love, they haven't been hardened by the system yet, right? They want to keep their forever family and they're desperate to do whatever it takes to stay there. And it breaks my heart even thinking about it. Um, I've got good friends and having gone through what I went through as a child, it could have been me too going through that. And I've had so many good friends that have gone through that. So my heart really goes out. I'm trying not to get choked up, but I'm failing. <sighs> but a lot of people don't know that that's part of the adoption experience for a lot of children is that they're coached on it. And one of their main fears is that they're gonna be sent back. Kind of like you see all the uh, uh, ads for animals being adopted. You know, you see an animal ads being adopted and the Arms of Angels songs is always the one playing, right? And just, you know, trying to jerk some tears. And then they'll say, and remember, a pet is for life or something like that. Well, why don't we do that for kids? Well, that's a different video for a different day. But my point is that's a legitimate fear on the part of a lot of kids that come up in the system. So anyway, bottom line, they, they get into it with Johnny and they realize that Johnny thinks that he has to do that stuff in order to retain his position as an adopted child. And it just breaks the heart of the parents. They're like, you know, I don't know, two years at this point. You know, you've been with us for two years. And... We're not mad at you, but it breaks our heart that you still think you have to earn your spot in this family. The day we adopted you, what happened with your name? And You know, Johnny's like, well, you gave me your last name. And the parents are like, yeah, so what does that mean? I'm part of the family? Yeah, you are an equal part of the family with the other children that are our blood children. You're not an add-on. You're not the ugly duckling. When we adopted you, we changed your name because changing your name means changing your identity. Think about teenagers, you know. We'll go through this with my son. His name is Joshua, right? And we have several nicknames, Joshy, Josh, different things like that, right? At some point, I don't know, his, his middle name starts with a D. So he might go by JD at some point. Uh, for step-by-step -step lovers out there, if you know that show, you can laugh with me. Not his personality, but still worthy of laughing. But I don't know, but at some point, 
teenagers often come up with, well, I don't want that name anymore. I want this one. That one represents my identity as a child. And this name represents my new identity as an adult, you know, because they're 12 and they think they're an adult. But the point is, a name signifies a change in identity. And you see that all through Scripture, too, by the way. Uh, catch our Genesis series. Uh, we, we talked about, in our series, we talked about Jacob becoming Israel, right? So catch my Genesis series. So anyway, back to the main point. The parents are talking to them. They're like, look, when we changed your last name, we adopted you. And that wasn't a temporary thing. You are now part of our family forever. You can't screw it up. We love that you make your bed. We love that you'd clean your dishes. We love that you do your own laundry. We love that you clean the bathroom and whatever else all the stuff is that he's doing. But that's not part of you becoming or keeping your spot in our family. That's great that you appreciate being here and you want to do those things out of gratitude. But if you never cleaned another dish, if you never did another stitch of laundry, if you never did a single other chore in this household, you would still be our adopted son. You are still part of our family from now until forever. You are equal with our own children. By the way, if you ever adopt, don't adopt if that's not your heart, if that's not your attitude in it, because you can't make that child a second-class citizen, right? So Johnny all of a sudden realizes I don't have to do anything anymore. I now belong to this family. That's the difference between genuine faith, realizing that because of Christ, I now belong to the family of God. I don't have to do anything to retain a spot. And I'm so motivated by gratitude, and I'm so changed. My heart is changed because of the indwelling of the Spirit. I'm now going to do all those good things, not because I have to, not because I'm trying to earn my spot, but because I'm so thankful I want to do those things. I want to take care of that person. It's the same childlike innocence where a child might offer up their piggy bank because they hear their parents talking about trying to pay a bill. You know, the parents are talking about a thousand dollar bill and the child's like, here's my, you know, five dollars that grandma gave me. See, that child they're just so thankful and they love their family so much that they are willing to give up everything they have to benefit the family. That's the heart of somebody that's saved. That's the heart of a real Christian. The heart of a cultural Christian says, I have to do these things in order to be part of the family or stay part of the family. That's the difference. My hope is that through this series, you will truly discern the condition of your own heart and whether or not you are a cultural Christian or a genuine believer, whether the Holy Spirit is an idea or whether the Holy Spirit indwells and motivates you. That is my hope and my prayer for you through this series. So my homework for you is to read Galatians 2, 15 through chapter 3 verse 29. That's my homework for you. Read Galatians 2.15 to 3.29 in light of this discussion and this whole series. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, if you appreciate this ministry and this content, make sure and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. YouTube will not show you the videos consistently if you don't do the bell icon. And if you don't watch consistently, eventually they'll stop showing you those videos as well. But that bell icon really is the key to making sure that you catch all future videos. If you don't appreciate the ministry, then I'm glad you hung out with us today and, you know, let me know why. But uh, if you do, make sure you don't miss it. Guys, we'd love to have you as part of our family, and we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you very much, and God bless.